Here we're gonna look at a nice little number theory problem. So our goal is to determine all of the odd primes p such that two to the p minus one minus one over p equals n squared for some natural number n. And essentially what I mean here is we want to determine everything that makes this left-hand side a perfect square. And I wanna point out that we need p to be an odd prime because that sets up this application of Fermat's little theorem because a priori, we do not know that this left-hand side is even a natural number, but Fermat's little theorem tells us that. And it tells us that via this language. So if P does not divide A, then A to the P minus one is congruent to one mod P. But what that means is that A to the P minus one minus one is a multiple of p. So in other words, you can divide by p and you'll still have a natural number. So obviously that's not gonna work here if the prime is two, because then you would have two dividing two, obviously, and you would not be able to really ensure that you have um, a natural number over here on the right-hand side. Okay, so anyway, that's kind of the idea for the motivation of this problem and why we can expect this to happen ever. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the solution. So since we know this is gonna be an odd prime, let's go ahead and set P equal to two M plus one, where M is bigger than or equal to one. So notice M equals one will give us three, that's obviously an odd prime. M equals two gives us five, that's an odd prime, and so on and so forth. So obviously not all values of M will give us a prime in this case, because not all odd numbers are prime. Okay, great, now what we wanna do is maybe rewrite this equation a little bit that will take the denominator out of it and make it so that we can play around with it a little bit better. So let's see how that is going to go. So we can write 2p minus one minus one equals n squared times p. Great. But now notice that that is gonna be the same thing as two to the m minus one. I should say two to the two m minus one equals n squared times p. But the next thing that we can do is factor that. So I can go ahead and factor that thing like two to the m minus one times two to the m plus one equals n squared times p. Great. So now what I wanna do is notice that the GCD of these two numbers must be one. And that's because they are consecutive odd numbers. So let's go ahead and write that down. So if, Let's use maybe a is odd, then a and a plus two are relatively prime. Great. So again, these two are relatively prime. So that tells us something about how this right-hand side factors. Just to kind of flesh it out a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and take this right-hand side and I will factor it like um, P times X squared times Y squared, where the GCD of X and Y are one. So you can always like take a perfect square, like N squared, and take it into two parts that are relatively prime, even if one of those parts is equal to one. So, and that's gonna allow us to set up two cases so that first case will be if 2m minus one is equal to p times x squared, and then 2m plus one is equal to y squared. So in other words, we've got these two parts right here that are relatively prime, and then we've got these two parts down here, which we can also assume are relatively prime. Now you might worry a little bit because, well, what if Y has a multiple of P in it? But we can just rename X and Y if that's the case. Okay, so that would be one of our cases. And then our second case, so case number two, will be that 2M minus one equals Y squared, and then 2M plus one equals P times X squared. Great. So to reiterate what's going over on here, we've got this left-hand side is factored into relatively prime pieces. This right-hand side is factored into relatively prime pieces. That means that those have to match up in some way. Okay, 
So now what we'll do is look at each of these cases and see what that gives us. So from here, we can rewrite this as y squared minus one, which is equal to y minus one times y plus one equals two to the m. So we've got a product of two numbers that is a multiple of two, I should say a power of two. So what that tells us is that each of those are powers of two as well. So we have y minus one equals two to the a, and then y plus one equals two to the b. And furthermore, we know that this b must be bigger than a, given that y plus one is bigger than y minus one. So let's go ahead and write that down. So b is bigger than a, and we know that b plus a equals m. Again, that's because of our exponent rules, which is happening right above. Okay, great. But now what we can do is take these two equations and subtract them, and that will give us 2b minus 2 to the a is equal to y plus 1 minus y minus 1, but that's going to be equal to 2. Great. But now we can go ahead and factor this left-hand side, and that's going to give us 2 to the a times 2 to the b minus a uh, minus 1 equals 2 times 1. So that tells us that a is equal to 1, and then b is going to be equal to 2. That's the only way to solve that. So let's go ahead and put, put that down. So this means a is equal to 1, and b is equal to 2. But now we can take that all the way back up. So notice if a is equal to 1, then that's going to make y equal to 3. But now if y is equal to 3, that means y squared is equal to 9 which means two to the m is equal to eight, which means m equals three. But finally, if m is equal to three, then that gives us our solution over here, which is p equals two times three plus one. In other words, p is equal to seven. So we've got our first solution, p is equal to seven, and it came from this first case. Now let's go ahead and dive into the second case using a similar strategy. Okay, so what I'll do now is focus on this first equation. So we can rewrite this first equation as y squared plus one equals two to the m. But now looking at this, we see that the right hand side is even unless m is equal to zero. But you know, notice that m is not allowed to be zero. So the right hand side is always even, but that means that the left hand side is also even. But in order for the left-hand side to be even, that means y squared has to be odd, which means y has to be odd. So we have worked this down to the case where y equals an odd number. Let's maybe write it as 2k plus 1. But that tells me that y squared plus 1 equals 4k squared plus 4k plus 2. So we get one from squaring the 2k plus one and then one that's already built out of there. And then we have this is equal to two to the m. Great. Now again, m is bigger than or equal to one, so that means we can divide by two to the one both sides of this equation. And that is going to give us 2k squared plus 2k plus one equals two to the m minus one. Great. And now we notice that the left-hand side of this is most definitely odd because it's an even number plus an even number plus an odd number. But that makes the right-hand side odd. But the right-hand side can only be odd if it's equal to one because the only power of two which is odd is two to the zero. So what that tells us is we finally know that m equals one in this case. But now we really don't have to do any intermediate steps. We can bring this m equals 1 all the way back up into our original setup where p was 2m plus 1. And that gives us our solution in this case, which is p equals 3. So we found our two solutions, p equals 3 and p equals 7. Those are the only odd primes that make this thing a perfect square. And that's a good place to stop.